Hi everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Magali and today we are going to be looking at the vinyasa. What a vinyasa actually is in our yoga practice and how we can modify it to mirror how we're feeling in our bodies on any particular day. So I'm sure we've all heard the word vinyasa when talking about yoga. A lot of yoga classes are called vinyasa flow classes. And what that means is a breath to body movement class. So moving the body with the breath, allowing the breath to initiate the movement. In practices such as Ashtanga, when we do postures, we do a vinyasa, so a chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, not only in between postures, but in between each side of the postures. And what that does is it brings us back to the breath. It brings us back to moving the body with the breath, rebalancing the body, energizing the body and creating space in the body with the breath. However, a traditional vinyasa, so chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, can be quite dynamic and challenging depending on how you're feeling on any particular day. I know sometimes my body is just not feeling up to it and all I want to do is sit in child's pose. So I will be going through some modifications that you can implement into your practice to mirror how you're feeling, how your body is feeling, so you can still flow nicely without feeling like you are not doing the practice fully. So before I go through the modifications, um, here is the traditional vinyasa. So I'll be starting from downward facing dog, but it's absolutely the same if you start from the top of your mat in standing or halfway lift, for example. We always move through plank as we go down to chaturanga. So starting from downward facing dog, on an inhale, you wave forward to plank. And exhale, bend the elbows, lower halfway to chaturanga, gaze forward, flat back. Inhale, push to upward facing dog, hips and knees off the mat, lift the gaze. Exhale, tailbone to the sky, downward facing dog. A vinyasa flow yoga class can be quite demanding on the wrists. So if you're finding that you need to modify your vinyasas due to wrist pain, I will pop a link to a video that I did on wrist health, so feel free to check that out. If it's just because the body is feeling tired or it's feeling a bit too dynamic and spicy for you today, here are some other options for you. So we'll start with the softest options first and move our way up to the more dynamic and spicy options, if you will. However, feel free to mix and match these at any point in your practice. The only important thing is that they match the inhale and the exhale, so they match the movement with the breath. So for the first option, we will start in downward facing dog. And then from here, instead of making your way forward to plank pose, you can drop the knees down on the mat as you would lower down to chaturanga, lower the knees down to tabletop. On an inhale, send the tailbone to the sky, lift the chest, lift the gaze. This is your upward dog modification. Exhale, tailbone down, curve through the spine. This is your downward dog modification. And then you have the option to send the bum towards the heels for child's pose. Quite often we stay in our downward dog for a few breaths. It's an option to stay in your child's pose. If you did want a bit more of a stretch in the back body and the shoulders, instead of child's pose, you also have the option to keep the hips over the knees and walk the hands forwards, melting the heart towards the earth. You can rest the forehead down on the mat if it's comfortable. This offers a really good release of the lower back and a beautiful stretch in the shoulders. One thing I will say about puppy dog pose or melting heart, however you decide to call it, is that it's really important to not be flaring the rib cage open. We want to glue the rib cage together and even though we're opening the front side of the body, we keep the core active and engaged so that when we are in this posture, we're accessing the shoulders rather than falling and opening in the front body. So there is an opening in the front body. So this is me with my rib cage flowing open, I'm flopping and there's absolutely no support. Whereas if I squeeze the core and glue my rib cage together, 
you notice that I probably don't go as far and that's absolutely fine. There's so much pressure to go so far in our yoga class, but this is absolutely perfect. Before moving on to the other modification options, I wanted to touch on the difference between upward facing dog and cobra because I feel like they get used together all the time, but they are quite different. Upward facing dog is much more dynamic than cobra pose. So let's look at them from a lying down position on our mat, belly on the earth. Tops of the feet are pressed into the ground and we'll look at cobra first. Hands are underneath the shoulders and we squeeze the back body, the shoulder blades together, elbows close to the body. On an inhale, we lift the chest and lift the gaze. We don't put too much pressure into the hands. We're not pushing ourselves up. We allow the squeeze of the back body to lift the heart up. We should be able to lift the hands off the mat and we're pressing the tops of the feet into the earth, engaging the legs and slightly lifting the kneecaps. Now looking at upward facing dog. So in upward facing dog, it's the same starting position, hands underneath the shoulders. But here we really push into the hands to lift the whole body off the mat, hips are off the mat. And we're pressing same tops of the feet into the earth and engaging the glutes. So we're protecting the back body and protecting the lower back, lifting the gaze towards the sky, shining the heart, shoulders back. So now that we've looked at cobra pose and upward facing dog, let's have a look at chaturanga. So chaturanga is a four limbed posture and that's really important. It means that the feet are hip width apart and the hands are shoulder width apart. We're not bringing the feet together. We really want to build a strong foundation. So coming, either starting from downward facing dog or plank pose, either way, we'll have to make our way to plank pose. We lower the body halfway, bending the elbows, scooping the lower belly under so we're not sticking the bum up. We squeeze the core, gaze forward. So that is quite a demanding posture to say the least, but there are many, many different options. So you of course have the option to lower the knees onto the mat. So if we start from downward facing dog, you can bring the knees down to the earth and then squeeze the elbows into the body. If you're looking to work on your chaturanga, this is a great, great modification for you. And then from here, you bring the tops of the feet down on an inhale, lift the hips, push into the hands to shine the heart forward for upward facing dog. However, if you wanted to come to cobra pose, that's absolutely fine. So from your modified chaturanga, you have the knees down, you squeeze the elbows, and then you can lower all the way onto the mat. And then on an inhale, we squeeze the back body, shine the heart, lift the gaze, tops of the feet into the mat, back body active. And then from here, you can either go to child's pose, to puppy pose, or to your downward facing dog. And remember that to get to your downward facing dog, so from your cobra or your upward facing dog, wherever you are, you can bring the knees to the mat, come to tabletop, tuck the back toes, and then lift the bum. These options are available for you wherever you are, whatever posture you are doing. What's great about understanding the modifications, not only for the separate postures, so downward facing dog, chaturanga and upward facing dog, is that also as a sequence, you can mix and match, as I mentioned before, all of the postures to really mirror how you're feeling in that particular day. So for example, if you have really, really tight legs, maybe downward facing dog is a bit too strong of a stretch for the hamstrings. So you may wish to take the option of puppy dog or child's pose. And it's not because you take child's pose that you then can't take the other more dynamic options of chaturanga and upward facing dog. And similarly, it's not because you are in a place where you can take a downward facing dog that you can't then lower the knees to rest those arms that really demand a lot of effort in Chaturanga to perhaps lower all the way softly and then shine the heart or find upward facing dog if it's in your practice 
and then maybe even child's pose. Understanding that you have these options at your disposal to take is really, really important for you and for your practice so that you can take care of yourself when you're practicing yoga or a vinyasa flow class. For a very soft variation to lowering down to the mat, I will show you. Let's start from tabletop. You can walk the hands forward just a little bit and on an inhale, you shift the weight forward so shoulders are over the wrist. And then as you exhale, squeeze the elbows into the body so the arms are supporting the weight and not your spine. Slowly lower down to the mat. On an inhale, squeeze the back body. It's really important that this inhale, we squeeze up, shoulders back. And exhale, you can push to child's pose, to downward facing dog, or to puppy dog. Wherever you are is perfect. So I hope that you have found this helpful and useful for your yoga practice. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask me below and I will see you on Friday for a lovely flow and hopefully you might be able to implement these into your practice. See you Friday. Bye!